Hello, good afternoon, and wel uh, welcome to the Midday Brief here on Joy News on Multi TV. Coming up within the hour, we'll get to hear the MPP's reaction to an interview granted uh, to Africa Watch magazine by Kwame Pienim. And Gokrest Security CEO George Agude has been hauled before the court for non payment of uh, SNIT contributions for his workers. We have these and more when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. Kwame Pienim, an elder statesman, says the new patriotic party needs the courage to confront defeat because, quote, it is good for democracy and the nation. Kwame Pienim, an outspoken politician, business economist, and investment consultant in an exclusive interview with Africa Watch, blamed the NPP national executives for exhibiting intellectual and mental laziness. According to him, the party is heading in the wrong direction. He proposed that the national executives reconsider doing the work they have been voted to do or leave for others to take over. We've been joined on the line now by the national chairman of the NPP uh, to react to this statement, uh, Jake Obechabilamte. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon to your many listeners and viewers. Hello? This has been suggested by uh, the Kwame Mpienu. Well, I haven't actually seen the article myself yet. Okay, so I can only really react to what you have just what you have just uh, said. Okay. Uh, you know, we we the national executive are the servants of the party. We are the servants of the members of the party. They appointed us through voting, and when they don't uh, want them, we're not happy with the work that we are doing. Uh, they will change us the same way that we have our democracy working with government. When you find that the government you, you have appointed or you're voted into office is not uh, delivering, then you vote them out again. I'm sure if, if we are failing, the members of the party will give us that, uh, that treatment. Mm -hmm. All I want to point out to some of the uh, persons who are uh, passed off as senior members of the party, although we have no such designation in our membership as a senior member, is okay. that the doors of the office are always open to every single member of the party. Mm. On almost every day, I, have, I myself am in the national office. Anybody who wants to know anything about the governance of the party or the party's actions has only to come to the office and I will give them a full brief on whatever is going on. Mm. Okay. If the party has been failing, then it's a very strange failure. For the very first time in the history of this party, since we formed it in 1992, we were able, after this presidential election, to collect 24,000 of the uh, statement of polls out of the 26,000 uh, that, uh, that were issued and for the polls that were conducted. We were able to collect those in time for the analysts to do the analysis of what was found and enter um, a plea in the Supreme Court within 21 days. The mm. party has never ever been able to achieve such a, such a feat. And when you achieve something like that, you don't just brush it off as if it came somehow from a bolt in the sky. But he it's, thinks, sorry to cut in here, but he thinks that you're going through all this process is just because you're, you're failing to accept the defeat. And you're, facing, you're, you're refusing to just accept the fact that the MPP lost the elections. And we do, we do refuse. We refuse to accept that we have been defeated in the presidential election because we have incredible evidence, huge amounts of evidence that show that we were not defeated in the election. Mm. And it is that evidence that we will show in the Supreme Court. I, I find it very difficult how anybody can judge evidence that they have not themselves seen or that they have not asked about, that you sit in your somewhere and say that you have determined that there's no evidence. When you are not, you, you don't actually come and ask, what is the evidence upon which you are going to the court? Mm. We presented this evidence even last week, Wednesday, to the, our parliamentary candidates and our senior members, all the uh, active members of the party at the Osu Presbyterian Hall. When Dr. Baumia presented the evidence, at the end of his presentation, 
everybody rose at, as one to give him a standing ovation because of the amount of work that had been done and the amount of evidence that had been gathered. So when somebody sits somewhere and says, I haven't seen the evidence, but I don't believe it exists, then I say to you, okay, <laughs> Uh, that, that, is, that, is your, that is your choice. But if you say it out loud, then all you are doing really is exposing your ignorance. Hmm. Okay, but then also he believes that you are on the wrong path. Uh, what do you make of that? Especially seeing as he argues that the case, is, uh, the case in court, is, that's not big the MPP party to the suit. It's just a, a matter of three individuals, yourself, the presidential candidate, and yeah. his, uh, uh, his running mate who I took the matter up. I think, I think Mr. PLM is entitled is entitled to his opinions. If he feels that we're on the wrong path, he is entitled to believe that we're on the wrong path. And if he chooses to use that to cause uh, some disaffection within the party, he's also at, at liberty to do that. That's not for me. That's not the way to do it. But, you know, when I come to judge the people who are going to judge whether we're on the right path or the wrong path, I will look at the path that you yourself have trodden in the past to see how successful you have been at a particular action. I will look at how successful Mr. Pianim has been in his political decisions before weighing up uh, what his uh, decision or his interpretation of the wrong or the right path actually uh, means about the way the MPP is handling it, its affairs. Mm. Okay, uh, so in effect, you're not taking uh much from what he's actually been saying about the fact that uh, you are you are lacking the courage to confront defeat and also that you're on the wrong path. Yes, because if, if you have absolutely no knowledge and you have not taken any trouble to come and get any knowledge about what we are really doing, then when you turn around and say we are what we are doing is wrong, I can't see how you can make that judgment. And I would think that if you really are the substantial person that you say you are, you should always make sure that whatever you say is supported by evidence that you yourself have seen and have evaluated. Mm. And before I let you go also though, uh, one quick thing, he also says that uh, you, the party, you should start making reference to the party as a, a Dankwa Buzia tradition party. Uh, what do you make of that as well? well I think um, it, the party is the, is the, is the party, um, okay, Dankwa, 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 Buzia were, were major, the major icons within within the 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 party within its uh, thing. We honor Dankwa because Dankwa was the the person who established early on and articulated our philosophy. We not we also uh, hailed uh, Chief Dombo because John, uh, Chief Dombo showed resolution, showed courage in the face of incredible intimidation, and then also showed that you know, the cap capacity for self-sacrifice. That should always be an example to our, to our supporters and our followers and those who believe in our tradition. Mm -hmm. And we also honor Dr. Buzia because Dr. Buzia did articulate again that none of the, the philosophy that we have he is the one who actually pins our, our social credentials when he said that we should each be our brother's keeper. So if we have picked our three out of the many illustrious sons and daughters of the MPP tradition, I don't think it means that we are therefore not honoring uh, all the others who go to, who have gone over the years and sacrificed and given us the platform uh, upon which we are, we attempt to continue to move forward and okay. to bring a better Ghana, uh, proper Ghana, and a Ghana that is moving forward to prosperity. Hmm. Okay, Jake Utanka Obete Bilante, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we'll leave it here for now. Jake is the national chairman of the new patriotic party. But moving on, properties of Ghana Railway Company Limited, including two of the company's bungalows located at the Beach Road residential area near Takradi and uh, Transit Quarters, have been sold out by the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, due to the Ghana Railway's debt, which runs into billions of CDs. The once vibrant Ghana Railway Company Limited is dying, according to the General Secretary of the Railway Workers' Union, who is calling for government, uh, government's intervention in the matter before further damages occur. Here's an exclusive report filed by our Western Regional Correspondent, William Benjamin Peters. Ghana has a relatively small rail network, which is very essential to the development of the country. 
Freight traffic remains the mainstay of the system accounting for over 90% of revenue. The Ghana Railway Company Limited was set up by the state to haul minerals such as bauxite, manganese, timber, cocoa, etc., as well as passengers. In an attempt to inject private participation in its operations, the corporation was chained to a limited liability company with no shareholders thereby, rendering the state as the sole owner of the company. Due to neglect and lack of maintenance, the company's operations have declined so much that the company is only operating on just the hauling of manganese from Insuta to Takradi and passenger service within Accra in Sawam and Tema. With over 2,000 workers in the company and operating only the aforementioned services, the company is unable to fulfill its financial obligations in respect of payment of workers' salaries, abiding by the terms and conditions of the collective bargaining agreement coupled with weak trucks, collapsed signaling and telecommunications system, weak mineral wagons, whilst passenger coaches imported as far back as 1986 are dilapidated and need to be refurbished. The Ghana Railway Company Limited now serves as an operator, whilst assets of the company are being handled by the Ghana Railway Development Authority. Ghana Railway Company Limited now owes its suppliers to the tune of billions of Ghana cities, and as a result, some of the company's properties are being auctioned to pay some of the debts. Properties such as two of the company's bungalows and its transit quarters with about 20 rooms have been sold out. In an exclusive interview with the General Secretary of the Railway Workers' Union, Goodwill Ntama, he stated that the railway is dying, especially with the auctioning of the assets. He, however, commended government for its efforts in injecting some monies into the sector through the China loan but believes saving the properties built for auction will redeem the image of the company. The new government has promised um, this $500,000 for the Western Rail Night. That is what, um, at the moment, we are all hoping that it will come. Now, because of our debt, our assets are being taken away by SNIT. We owe SNIT a lot. Apart from SNIT, we owe a lot of companies, and all those have been submitted to government. Um, even in our, our operations, paying salaries, it's a very difficult one because we are running early up to Nsuta with manganese. That is what is bringing money, serious money, into the system now. And so without the government support, we can't pay salaries. The managing director of the Ghana Railway Company Limited, Atoboche, refused to comment on the matter since negotiations were currently ongoing at a higher level. He, however, said the company is not dying, especially with ongoing works to fix the Western Line and the acquisition of 70 new wagons to boost haulage by the company and expressed hope that things will be normalized as soon as possible. The priority is the Western Line. And you know with the railway, we normally we get most of our revenue from the freight service. And uh, we, uh, we subsidize the passenger service with the revenue from the um, freight service. So if the Western Line is rehabilitated and we start hauling the manganese, we start hauling the bauxite, we start hauling the uh, cocoa, definitely um, the railway will, start, will stand on its feet and it will come back to the railway that we used to know when we were growing up. The chief executive officer of GoQuest Security Limited, George Agude, is facing trial at an acquired district court for non-payment of a total of 2,653,161.90 pesos social security and national insurance trust contribution of his workers. He pleaded not guilty to the charge and was on Saturday granted bail in the sum of 100,000 Ghana cities with a cash surety of 50,000 to be justified until March 23. According to the prosecutor for SNIT, Frida Na Ajele Kone, George Agude, the presidential candidate of the CPP in the 2004 elections, failed to pay 1,036,986 CDs, 77 pesos SNIT contributions of his workers as at December 2012, which had accrued an interest of 
1,616,172 and 13 pesos at the initial hearing on February 2. Uh, that was when the case was first heard uh, on February 2. Uh, the court held that... Uh, I beg your pardon, I'll, I'll take it again. He pleaded not guilty to the charge and was on Saturday granted bail in the sum of 100,000 Ghana cities with a surety of 50,000 to be justified until March 23. According to the prosecutor for Snit, Fridana Ajele Kone, Judge Agude, the presidential candidate of the Convention People's Party, CPP, in the 2004 election, failed to pay 1,036,986 CDs, 77 pesos Snit contributions of his workers as of December 2012, which had accrued an interest of 1,616,172 CDs and 13 pesos. At the initial hearing on February 2, his counsel Kwamena Bading disputed the amount and requested SNIT to furnish him with the details. But counsel for SNIT indicated that the accused had already been provided details of the case. Away from the courts, artisans in the Bonahafu region are blaming the government for their inability to find a lasting antidote to the electricity and water problems in the country. According to the artisans, the intermittent power cuts and current load shedding have, en have rendered most of them redundant. The artisans spoke to Nesta Kafi Ajuma, Joy News' Bonahafu regional correspondent. When Joy News team went round, Artisan shops in the Techiman and Winchi municipalities, as well as Tain district, had little activity going on, and most of the workers were idling, while few used generator for their work. They admitted that the current load shedding exercise is adversely affecting their work. They were half unhappy that instead of finding solutions to the problem, authorities always play blame games. A refrigerator repairer, Adomensa, and a carpenter, Kwame, think government should be doing something more pragmatic to restore constant power supply. Coastal operators in these areas are also complaining that they are losing a lot due to the load shedding exercise and the frequent power cuts. Amankwai J is a sales manager at one of the main distribution centers of frozen foods within the Techiman, Wenchi and Tain areas. Meanwhile, Joy News guarded that many of the residents in these areas are relying on generators to power their equipment. Our cameras capture these generators that are being serviced at Techiman. For Master Abu, business is booming, and he wishes it could be like this always. Mr. Kafu Yajume's report for Joy News. Well, food, food refrigeration and free freezing are the modern methods of choice for preserving food. But in an era of erratic power supply, these modern solutions have at best become white elephants and at worst pose a serious risk of food poisoning. My colleague Yafu Swajin reports that households and industries in the capital city, Accra, are struggling to find ways to keep food poisoning an extra burden on strained purses. 
The recent fluctuations in power supply is hampering the ability of industries and households to provide controlled temperature and humidity necessary for food preservation. Gladys owns this mini cold store. At the time of our visit, lights were out and all the ice in her deep freezer had thawed. She had to throw away most of her stock because she doesn't have a generator. Do away with some of my meat and some fishes because the ice all toys and then it, it smells, the meat smells. For instance, one carton of chicken, um, the layer, costs um, 60 CDs. Okay, so assuming one carton, or you have about maybe 10 cartons or 5 cartons of chicken in there, you, you, you know how much you are going to lose. So it's really affecting us. Mavis also gives the same account about the situation at her cold store. Not only are commercial businesses affected by the situation, in many households also, refrigeration is practically a lost cause. People end up preheating leftover foods several times over, which affects the nutritional value of food and the taste as well. Mamiesi says she has had to boil her meat as it was going bad in the fridge. <laughs> Despite these efforts, tons of food go to waste each day because fridges and freezers cannot be powered. Haruna Al Hassan, a businessman, has an alternative means of preserving the beverage he prepares and explains how he goes about it. Hey. In the meantime, this man has resolved to acquire a generator set to enable him preserve meat at his cold store. Every Saturday, if he up to now, since me and baby are saying to me to generate an ever woman. For now, it seems businesses and households would have to bear the burden of rising food costs without the respite of cheaper bulk buying deals, at least until regular power supply is restored to bring back online modern food preservation techniques. Well, in times like this, appropriate technology comes to mind, uh, Aprotech, as we used to call it back in Legon. But let's move along and do some other stories. Now, days after bemoaning the state of the utility services in a state of the nation's address, President John Dumani Mahama is moving to ensure that the timelines given with respect to the nation's energy and water situation are met. The president will from Monday visit the nation's major power and water producing points to deliberate with the technical persons on the ground. He's also expected to interact with the workforce to determine appropriate ways of ending erratic supply of water and power. The working visits will take the president first to the Abwaze plant, the wager water treatment plant, then to the Bui hydroelectric dam, amongst others. Sources close to the presidency indicate that the president is embarking on the working visit in an attempt to ensure that government intervenes where necessary to end the current crisis in some parts of the country. The country has been burdened by power and water supply challenges for several months, a situation which has gravely affected industry and households. During the presentation of the State of the Nation's address, President Mahama promised, to end, promised an end to the current power challenges by close of April and further indicated the commitment of government to ensure that households were provided with portable water and reliable power. Still on some other news, officials of the Narcotics Control Board, NACOP, have made the largest seizure of cocaine in recent years at the Temahaba. The drug, estimated to be 200 kilograms with a street value of $12 million, was concealed in a 40-foot container filled with 1,946 boxes of shampoo imported from Bolivia in South America. The owner of the drugs, Chief Sunny Ikechuku Benji Ike, a 53-year-old Nigerian businessman, has been arrested together with another accomplice, 
James Elekechuku, 47, a second-hand clothing dealer in Accra. Chief Eke was described by international law enforcement agencies as a notorious drug baron who had been involved in several drug seizures in Brazil and Bolivia. According to the Deputy Executive Secretary of NACOB, Nilante Blankson, the success of the operation was the result of cooperation among the security agencies in the country. And the Tema Police Command has mounted a search for three prisoners who broke jail on midnight, at midnight of Saturday at the Tema Fishing Harbor Police Station. The three 19-year-old Ebenezer Nyagbeji, 20-year-old Ilyasu Muhammad, and Daniel Kwame Kumi, who is also 20 years, escaped through the cell's roofing. The escapees were said to have been brought back from the police hospital where they received treatment. Ilyasu and Daniel were due to be sent to the Insawan uh, prison on Sunday. This is the second, this is about the second time criminals have escaped custody in the Tema police uh, station, or under the police, the Tema police command. Reminds me of a prison break, but I hope that's not the situation here. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back to continue with more news here on the Midday Brief. you need about twice the usual amount to pay for the same quantity of food or foodstuff from the market. This is because commodity prices have changed in conformity with the increases in petroleum products. Joy News checks at the Canadian market reveals commodity price increase of about 100% revealing a worrying trend of non-regulation in commodity pricing. Price hikes in petroleum products are normal phenomena the world over. Usually when that happens, all other commodities are affected. In the wake of fuel price increase in the country, it is obvious that the market will experience a major price shakeup. So Joy News was at the market to substantiate that claim. It is one of the biggest and major markets here in Accra, the capital city. A lot of people from all over the country come here to shop. Now, following the increment of fuel prices, we've been here, we've been talking to some of the traders as well as some of the buyers, and they tell us that prices have really increased in conformity to the fuel prices now someone tells me meat used to be five cities and it is still five cities someone tells me it used to be three cities and it is still six cities a bit of inconsistency there but it is established here most of the things that are sold here have increased who really regulates the prices of foodstuff when fuel prices increase. With the exception of tomatoes, which has seen an extraordinary price hike because it is not in season, everything in the market has a different price now compared to one week ago before the increment. Traders and shoppers confirm this. Um, for a price of a commodity like cassava, um, I live with my brother. We always buy two CDs worth of it. Today I had to buy four CDs because when I look at the quantity I had, it wouldn't be enough, so I had to top up. Not too good, but what can we do? Forward ever, backwards never. I came to buy um, cucumber right now, and I was told it's 150 pesos, but usually it used to be one city. Then, some piece of lettuce here to cost, um, I think, one city. But previously, I would have bought that for, let's say, 70 pesos or 80 pesos. It puts stress on your budget, unlike before, you know, you have to put extra on the amount you intend to spend when you come to market. So I said, I can wait say no me the big me and sell two cities. And I wear one city. Say say where you two cities, where you one city, fifty pesos. And I wear see you one city. We are two bedroom, we never buy them pa there's a whole crazy sky who knew I won't talk right. Never buy them. There's a whole banner say tomatoes near one city and they one city nine two cities. Then they saw as a BBS is but others are not bothered about the price changes. Oh, it's cool. It's, yeah, the price is good. If you want to buy something, if it's something, uh, the, uh, the price is high, you must buy because you can't do anything. If you are hungry, you will buy it. If you, if you don't have money, little one you have, you will buy it. The interesting bit that underlines the absence of any formal regulation as far as commodity prices are concerned are the varied prices of meat sold here. One pound is five cities. Three months before, uh, before Christmas, it was four cities, 50 pesos. You can ask my other colleagues, the Christmas time, that, that was how we were selling it. We were selling it five cities and still it's five cities. Maybe later it will increase it, but for now it's still the same price that we're selling it. Well, for me, the, it's, good, it, it, it's good for me. 
Oh, that, that's um, three cities. So now it's, it's six cities, so it's fine. Yes, because now the meat, the price then we are taking. Now it costs. You see, uh, by people are buying it small, small. So we are profit to be one cities if you, if, if you are selling a pound. Uh -huh. So it's good. There's also a corresponding increment in the prices of processed food. I was told, for instance, the quantity of rice and beans bought at 70 pesos is now about one city. So is Kenke. We learned the sizes have decreased and price has shot up. First, the Kenke was 50 pesos. Now we sell it 70 pesos and they can buy it. The trend is clear. There is no regulation on commodity prices and everybody here sells according to how much profit they want to make or the losses they make in cutting their produce. If anything reasonable is charged for a commodity, it is solely based on the seller's discretion. Perhaps the only thing which ensures that consumers have value for money is competition. For Joy News, Gifty and Doa Pia. Okay, so this is where the men who give chop monies will have to understand. And uh, if you still can't stomach any of these, best option, become a vegetarian. You probably wouldn't have to struggle that much. But let's move along now. Palm kernel oil business has been one of the longest business venture Ghanaian women have been engaged in. But as time goes on, the palm kernel business still faces challenges with the process of extracting the oil and the ready market for the product. Joy News takes a look at the cumbersome tale of small-scale extraction of palm oil, palm kernel oil, also known in the local parlance as ajengo. Women engaged in the palm kernel oil business move from house to house in search of their raw material, palm kernel, for free or for sale. An olonka of the palm kernel costs seven Ghana cities and the women say one needs a capital of between 500 and 700 Ghana cities as a startup capital for the business. The nuts are mechanically crushed to extract the seeds or kennel. The women then go through another manual process of removing the accompanying chaff and shells. <laughs> Apart from the nut cracking machine, the entire process is done manually, making the work cumbersome. After removing the nuts from the shell, it is melted through steam treatment, with the women manually staring throughout the process to get all the kennels heated. They have to rely on the earthing fire with the kennel chaff used to boost the amount of heat. After this, the nuts are sent to the mill to obtain the liquid. Then on, it is heated continuously for at least an hour to burst all the oil-bearing cells to settle on the surface, and a ladle is used to scoop the oil which evidently floats at the top. Once the heating is done, the oil is poured into a bottle or plastic container and it's ready for the market. Palm kernel oil is used in food preparation, soap making and as basis for medicinal products. <laughs> Palm kennel cake is also used as food supplement in the feeds for dairy animals and pigs. The shells are used as dust palliative on untarred roots and sometimes as fuel for the blacksmith. Maria Muzu, who has been in this business for the past 10 years, shares her experience about the business. The major challenge faced in this industry is the issue of raw material 
capital and the ready market for the oil. Whereas small and medium scale enterprises are supported or have access to credit to enable them to expand their businesses, these women in the small scale extraction of palm kernel oil have no help and are appealing to government and financial institutions to give them loans or grants to expand their business. Hopefully the price of uh, Ajengo won't go high because they use their own byproducts to fuel their whole process. So hopefully it will remain stable so we can still get Zomi and all that and all the other uh, derivatives at a cheaper price. But stay with us, we'll be right back to do some health and then of course some briefs from international show business sports stay on multi tv presents the buy and win promotion from now to the end of march 2013 when you buy a multi tv quality combo or strong digibox you stand the chance of winning fantastic prizes free here is how just buy your multi tv quality combo or strong digibox today text the serial number to the shot code 1757 and boom you are in with a chance to win flat panel televisions fridges air conditioners cameras all from samsung gtp new style wax spread from GTP, free digital boxes, t-shirts and more. Or the ultimate prize, a brand spanking new Brilliance FSV saloon car from SEL Technologies. Remember, there will be three draws, so hurry and buy your multi-TV quality combo or strong digital box now. Text the serial number to 1757 and hold your breath. Your surprise may well be on its way. This promotion is brought to you by Multi-TV in collaboration with its Digibox distributors, Strong Technologies, Somotex and Syndicated Capital. On the current Lottery platform of NLA. Proudly sponsored by Brilliance from SCL Technologies, Samsung Televisions, and New Star from GTP. Terms and conditions apply. More TV, more TV for free. Get a Digibox now. Visit us on www.multitvworld.com or call 0302 211 68025 for a multi TV accredited dealer. Well, we found out the health benefits, whether we like it or not, of our jungle. But let me tell you the health benefits you can derive from one of my favorite foods. Everyone loves a big piece of thirst quenching watermelon on a hot yeah, day. It is so refreshing. Company, but did you know here, that it also is nutritionally at packed? Closing headlines. Gopress Security CEO George Agude has been hauled before the court for non payment of SNID contributions of his workers. And also, uh, we spoke to Jake Obechebilante, national chairman of the New Patriotic Party, about uh, we sought a reaction from him about comments made by Kwame Mpienyi uh, that the party is not comfortable or, or is not courageous enough to concede defeat. But Jake thinks otherwise. He thinks that they are doing what is right and also uh, what they are supposed to be able to do uh, for the party. So that's it for the bulletin. My name is Nia Kofi Smartabi. We continue with our news briefing from 2 p.m. Make a day with us here on Joy News. Have a good afternoon.